Hi. It's a Genshin day. Are you excited? I'm excited. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean Genshin. Did you hear about the 18 year old who spent 20,000 with her dad's credit card on Genshin? 18 year old? Listen, I, I could understand like a 10 year old who does not understand how credit cards work, but an 18 year old? Mmm. <sighs> The Illuminated Beast of the Sea. I hate when this happens. I swear to goodness. <laughs> Wait. Wait, the Ganyu quest? Is that the, the Ganyu quest? You have to clear the Ganyu quest? No, you guys don't understand. I'm very sad about this. It's because I unlocked it. I wish you could lock it back up. All right, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and say it. This was supposed to happen months ago. I had it planned. I had for Halloween actually. I had planned to cosplay as Ganyu and stream the Ganyu character quest while cosplaying as Ganyu. And I got the costume in time. I lost the horn. <laughs> I lost the horn and then I had to buy new horns. And then those took forever to come in. They're much better horns though. But yeah, so I have a Ganyu cosplay in Texas that I still plan on, on doing. I still plan on doing it. But I was gonna do it for this quest. I shouldn't have unlocked it. <laughs> I messed up. I mean, I assume we're gonna get a Ganyu part two, right? So maybe just wait until then? Head for... Okay, we're looking for Ganyu. But we are Ganyu. We already found her, okay? Problem solved. Let's start the quest. Let's start the Archon quest. I see her! Ganyu meets oh, Ganyu. Carson's standing over there! That's Ganyu! <laughs> Finally found her! It's, see, don't you find it strange? Don't you find it odd that they lock the quest when you're in another quest that has the NPC, but yet you could be playing as the character that you're about to talk to? Explain that to me, Mihoyo! I have left the human world. Please contact the Yua High Pavilion regarding matters concerning the commercial port. Wait, what? You left the human world? Huh? You don't want to be the Chising secretary anymore? But they're all waiting for you to come back! That's why you're here? You want me to come back? I'm afraid you came here in vain. What? Did something happen? She's being very dramatic. The clouds fold <laughs> and unfold. The tide ebbs and flows. It was meant to be. After a thousand years away, I came back to Juyun Karst. Looking at the clouds floating among the mountains brings me peace of mind. I feel better now. Uh, but <laughs> oh. deserves the peace of these mountains. The cloud retainer. Since you are Ganyu's friends, tales from her youth shall one apprise you of, perhaps? Oh, cloud retainer. <laughs> Nothing to be ashamed How are we? Of. I'm so confused. You were so cute as a child. <laughs> I'm certain that your friends would like to hear of it. Now that's a good topic. Everyone wants to hear it. Uh. <laughs> Little Gon, you loved when the horns <laughs> on the top of her head were caressed. That's so cute. <laughs> Everyone was still taking care of her. One was pestered most often <laughs> to touch her horns. She was elsewise loath to sleep. That's adorable. <laughs> Cloud retainer? <laughs> Forget it. It's about time for my training. I will take my leave. My grandparents love to tell embarrassing stories about me as a kid. It's one of their favorite things to do. <laughs> I'm like, I know I was weird. Thank you. <laughs> it seems you didn't read the room. One's intention was merely to relieve the awkward tension. Most benevolent among <gasps> all adepti. I love the these. They drink only spring water and eat only whole grain. Oh, but perhaps the mountainous healthy. dwellings of adepti in Joyun Karst might be too lonely for her human side. Under moonlight, did one see her last? She stood by the precipice's so edge, pretty. and upon the mist veiled mountains she gazed. Her thin figure was immersed in the vast sea of clouds. I want to take screenshots. 
and sought to convince her to go back to the human world. Let me. But just then, she said thus. Leoa Harbor feels even lonelier than Julian Karst. When I look at the sea of clouds in Julian Karst, they merely feel the loneliness of a solitary cloud. This is so good. When I step into the sea of people in Leoa, I feel the loneliness of an inhuman that doesn't belong in the human world. <gasps> that was so good. By chance, hear this much of Ganyu's thoughts. That was amazing. Alone, she will find her predicament hard to conquer. One hopes that you will accompany her. <gasps> That's all we had to do! Yay! Oh, how exciting! Well, navigate. Should we really be so? This is interesting. The Archon quest is in Leoa. That's cool. So maybe we're gonna go tell them about what happened in Inazuma. I don't really know, but I'm excited. Here we go. I heard this Archon quest is good. Well, how would you guys rank it in comparison to the last couple of Archon quests? Because I feel like. I feel like the last couple were so good. You rank it top? Dang. <laughs> I have gathered everyone here today to make an important announcement. I am, <gasps> in fact, planning to rebuild the Jade Chamber. I'm so surprised. The title did not give that away. <laughs> the building site has been chosen, and most of the materials have been assembled. Three key items are, however, still outstanding. They are as follows. Sunset Vermilionite, Wonder Cores, and Adepti Sigils. I wonder who's going to go Adepti get these things. Sigils serve as a means of integrating the mechanical Definitely not the traveler. Adepti art. These things won't be easy to get hold of. But if it means a chance to get some inside information on Leo at Harbor's development plan for next year. My cat is sitting in front of the monitor. Ningguang's rebuilding the Jade Chamber? This is a huge deal! Let's get involved! This is exciting, because that was really sad when we lost the Jade Chamber. It was horrible. So you heard my announcement, did you? What do you think? Interested? Can I really ask you anything at all? Yes. <laughs> Providing the question pertains to something I am knowledgeable about. <laughs> uh, maybe I can find out more about my brother. Really? <laughs> Look, it seems like there's something kind of fishy going on over there. Ma'am, you seem like an eminent and distinguished young lady to me. I can see that you're easily going to win this procurement contest Lady Dingwang has set up. As it happens, we have some information about the materials that I really think might interest you. Come on, let's find somewhere a little more private and we can get down to brass tacks. We get to meet Shenny. No. I don't need it. Ah, uh, don't be like that. Hey, come on, don't go! This music is so pretty. Leela has the best music. <laughs> well, will you look at that? I love her man? braid, it's so pretty. Nowhere left to run. Don't worry, we're not bad guys. You give us some Mora, we give you a little info. Everybody's a winner. Boss, I got a bad feeling about this. Look at her, the, the white hair, the, the energy she gives off. I, I'm telling you, there, there's something different. <gasps> her about eyes her. are pretty, too. So what? I never She's noticed. Lost. How are we ever going to repay those gambling debts if we just let her walk away? <laughs> gambling from debt. I've already told you, I don't need your information. Gambling debt? If you speak in my gotcha stuff, game? I'm happy to repeat it in a way that won't be so easy to forget. Whoa, sassy. Uh, come on, ma'am. No more excuses! <sighs> I know you have money. I saw you. Uh, can we beat him up? Yeah, I saw you. Strolling into Leo Lee Pavilion, ordering a table full of food, and only taking a few bites. Then she knew a kiosk, then Wanmin restaurant. Same story each time. What if that's her job? You order all the a taste dishes, tester. Take a few bites, then you're on your way again. Master warned me not to lay a hand on anyone in Liyue Harbor. But here we are. Hmm. Perhaps... Ah, uh, yes. Let's call it fate. 
Boss, I'm telling you something's <laughs> not right. <laughs> What are you afraid of? We're just selling information. It's not illegal. If she lays a finger on us, all the better. We'll sue her for everything she's worth. They're trying to intimidate people into doing business. Oh, you again. <laughs> the Millilith. What, what, what are the Millilith doing here? Did you do this? You ought to mind your own business. I swear. Silence. How dare you threaten innocent civilians? You're coming with us. She's a Yelp reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 don't be angry, sir. Pl Where are you going? Please, let me explain. What? Why do you come up on the desk like that? And then when I pick you up... I don't know what that said. It probably went by too fast. Anyway. Don't worry, everything's okay now. Shen oh, Shenhua. Shen I've been saying Shenyi. My name. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Oh! Oh, I've heard about you two before. <sighs> Thank you for helping to defuse the situation. Uh, I could have dealt with it myself, though. <sighs> I suspect smashing his head against the ground a handful of times is all it would have taken to get him to surrender. Oh my god! <laughs> you can't do that! <laughs> what? Um, what was that noise? That would be my stomach growling. Hmm, I haven't eaten enough. She's so honest. <laughs> Wait, that's right. They said you went around all the restaurants ordering this and that and the other, but only took a small bite of each dish. Then of course you're still hungry. So, anything in particular you're hungry for? Hmm, Chingson, glazed lily, violet grass. These are my usuals. What? Uh, those are all medicinal herbs. Mm, medicinal herbs? Kinda hard to explain. Mm, anyway, Boo Boo Pharmacy's not far away. Let's take Shenha there for a big medicinal meal. Ugh. After all, you can't work on an empty stomach. Why does she eat medicine? Do you think Shenha might be an adeptus? It seems like it's her first time in Liwei Harbor, and she doesn't seem to get how things work. Mm, maybe. She is an adeptus. That would explain everything. I kind of want to watch her character demo now. Alright, maybe we should do that. <laughs> and do be loud. Halt! Oh. Chongyun. This explains all the demonic activity. It was all you're doing. This ends now. Whoa. Who are you? Whoa. Demons are masters of deception. Never let down your guard. Oh, not the music. That's good. <laughs> Pretty epic. Oof. I love the music. This demonic activity is an omen of impending disaster. Perhaps Master was right. Thank you for rendering your assistance. I see you're also an adept exorcist. <laughs> Some of your techniques look quite familiar, so I'm wondering. Uh, I am Shen He. I roam these mountains. You needn't worry about me. Oh, uh, but you, uh, your temperature uh, seems unusually high. Are you all right? Oh, oh my popsicle! I almost <laughs> wait. Remember when he killed him with a popsicle? Wait. Never so forget. I... You're my auntie. Oh, <laughs> what? Where's Chi Chi? Good question. Chingsen, glaze lily, and violet grass, please. Half a pound of each. What is she gonna do with it? 
My hunger has now abated. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how did that taste? Rather awful. The food of the mortal realm is most delicious. But should I return to the mountains, yearning for the food here shall only pose an obstacle to my continued spiritual development. That proves it! Paimon knew she was an adeptus! Is she, though? Are we 100% sure? Oh, right! Paimon almost forgot! We came out to take part in the Rebuild the Jade Chamber competition! And... And now we're probably super behind because we've been held up for so long. Hmm, I see. I heard something about the contest when I was passing by. <laughs> yep! You get to ask Ningguang any question you want if you win! What an exciting prize, well, asking a question. <laughs> hmm. I came for the rebuilding of the Jade Chamber, but until this point I had no intention of joining a contest. However, you have shown me your kindness, and I would now like to lend you my assistance. Let's join forces. Then let's not delay. I have a plan. Her alpha is similar to um, not sure whether Ganyu's, to what the style of it. This plan can be classified as awesome. I do, however, believe it will be highly effective. But yeah, if she's an adeptus, we simply need to make sense. dispose of everyone who is currently ahead of us. Then, we alone shall become the victors. Vito! That is not acceptable! <laughs> not by a long shot! <laughs> I was wondering who I could hear arguing over there. <gasps> so, it's you. I love him! When are we gonna get to pull for him? I love him. Lady Ningguang wishes to purchase a large batch of wound dressing. We're running low at the store, so I came out to fetch the ingredients personally. Master Singcho, thank goodness you're <gasps> finally back. Ooh, okay. I wasn't counting on finding you here today. What's going on? And how, pray tell, may I be a Pray friend? tell? Xingqiu, have you ever heard of Sunset? Familiar? Is this Final Fantasy XIV? The truth is, the Feiyun Commerce Guild is in possession of some Sunset Vermilionite, but only one piece. We are holding it on behalf of someone who has asked us to put it up for auction, and a lot of interested parties have already come to us inquiring about the price. At the end of the day, it all comes down to supply and demand. In this case, I'm guessing the final transaction price may be in excess of 500 million mora. <laughs> That's a lot. Cool. Whoa. Did she just change the weather and day? This place was time using a special adepti art. But now that I have removed it, we can inspect the area more closely. Uh, what? Weren't we at a waterfall just now? How did we suddenly end up here? With any luck, the sunset familiar night we're looking for should be in here. Really? Let Paimon see! Huh? Isn't that the Sealy from before? Look, it's gone and snuck beneath the clouds! And now that Paimon takes a closer look, the rocks and trees here don't seem complete! Hmm. <gasps> Could there be something below the clouds? Probably. What do you think, Shenna? These are not real clouds. They are the product of an adepti art used for spatial partitioning. If we want to go down, we must first destroy the mechanism that is maintaining the Adepti art. Okay. All right, then let's do it. I sense the presence of monsters in this place. I don't know where they are hiding, so we better be careful. I could fall asleep to this music every night. It's so pretty. Okay. I don't want to, like, uh, fall, you know? Uh... I... Oh, oh, okay, we're good, we're good. This is so cool. Oh, I just realized we're using Shenha. Oh, I didn't even do her demo yet. Oh, this is cool, okay. All right, ready, ready? Ooh. Oh, that's really cool. So is the Jade Chamber. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so sassy. But then again, why isn't it floating? Paul Strait doesn't float until it's activated. But if we don't activate it, how else are we gonna lift it? 
This rock must weigh well over a thousand pounds, surely. Don't worry. I can handle the weight quite easily. Are you sure? Oh my god, uh, she's gonna... Be careful. She's gonna yeet it. I'll go on ahead with the plostrite. Let's meet at the building site later. Shenha lifts up the plostrite and leaves. Oh, Why didn't we get to see it? I wanted to watch her lift it. Are you kidding me? What? Oh my god, I can't believe my eyes. <laughs> I wanted to see her eat it. How can she lift that massive rock all by herself? She's got to be one of those adepti, surely. Oh, mighty adeptus, please <laughs> give me your blessing so that in the coming year I may reap a more bountiful salary. This is top tier in size and quality, and the condition it's in is quite simply immaculate. Congratulations. This item is approved for submission. Awesome. I'm just like, I'm just thinking about it, but does anybody else find it a little bit like... I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this is a little... exploitive. I don't know. Like, Ningguang is... making people go out and get the materials for her in exchange for simply asking questions. I don't know how I... <laughs> Just now on the way over, pretty much everyone was singing your praises. Oh, really? What kind of reaction is that? <laughs> so strange. Aren't you happy about She's it? She's modest. Whenever Paimon gets praised, Paimon can't help but hold her head up high and break into a big smug smile. <laughs> I've had similar compliments before. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> they call me an adeptus. Treat me with great deference and respect, as if I'm set apart from the common folk. Yeah, cuz that's how adept I are. But uh, I am not. Uh, she just wants to be normal. Are you all right? I'm fine. I've been exerting myself quite a lot ever since we set foot in that abode. Uh, I'm just a little fatigued. Well, Bywin said that there are some makeshift hotels we can use, right? Let's go check in and take a rest. <sighs> no need. I simply need to find myself a secluded place in the wilderness to sit and meditate in silence. No problem. You can't do that. It's dangerous out in the wild on your own. When you're hungry, you go eat something tasty. And when you're tired, you go lie down in a nice, Comfy bed, all right? Seriously, don't punish yourself like this. Guest accommodations are far more comfortable than the wilderness. Okay, if you insist. Great, now we're talking. Let's head to our hotel. But if that's what she likes and if that's how she recharges, then who are we to tell her what to do? I mean, she just yeeted that giant rock. I'm pretty sure she can handle <laughs> meditating in the wilderness. Look how pretty the sky looks. Oh my gosh. Here are your keys. All right. Hope you enjoy your stay. Please excuse me. I'll leave you to it. Shenha, you should go get some rest. We'll hang around outside until the other room's ready. Hyman's gonna go see if there's anything good to eat around here. <laughs> Hyman couldn't help but notice one of the guests walk in with a huge mm. grilled chicken drum. Making me hungry. What's my one for Shenha? She can have it as a midnight snack, or save it for breakfast tomorrow. I made big ziti for dinner. <sighs> All right, I will head to my room for now. If you need anything, don't hesitate to disturb me. I'm a light sleeper. I will hear if you knock on the door. Have a good rest, Shenha. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow. Hey, isn't that Cloud Retainer? <gasps> it's Cloud Retainer! Here. So that's why we had to do the, the Ganyu quest. <laughs> One trusts you have met Shen Ho. So, are you getting along quite well? So far, so good. Yeah. So, you know Shen Ho too, Cloud Retainer? Naturally. Save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor. All the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen Ho to some degree. Mmm. Cool. I feel like she and Ganyu could be besties. What's her Adeptus name anyway? <laughs> Calling her 
Shenhua feels kind of friendly, but also kind of disrespectful. So Paimon's thinking maybe it'd be better if we called her by her adeptus name instead. Her adeptus name? Why, pray tell, would Shen He have an adeptus name? Wait. Uh, don't all adepti have a special title they go by? Is she not On an adeptus? At this point, you are correct. Ah. However, Shen He is human. Okay. That's why she was saying that. Oh, oh right. Wait, what? I, yeah, they never actually, like, confirmed that she was an adeptus. It was just like, oh, Paimon's just like, I just assume. <laughs> And then Shenha's like, <laughs> why are people praising me? She's a very strong human, though. What the heck? Never would have guessed. Paimon neither. One first found Shenha by chance in a cave. Hmm. One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. Being of an ever vigilant disposition, one entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shenha. Then aged around six years old. What? In her hand, she held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains. At incarnate. six years old? What? That sounds so dangerous. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally and are highly reliant on their parents for survival, but not so her. But what makes her different? That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. Shen has a killer? Is she gonna kill us? Uh-oh. <laughs> In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shen -ha might have... Not necessarily. Mm. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the god's wrath was gradually receding. Even had the stalemate continued. Wow. One suspects that Shen He may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. A six-year-old killing a god. We love to see it. That's still so dangerous, though. Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Oh my god, we just explained that, Paimon. She likes to kill. Moon Carver once performed a divination for her. He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy, she is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses that her soul must be bound with red ropes to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. The red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also the red ropes from the character more. demo. Ningguang once made a bold assertion that this is to be the era of the contract between Liu Wei and the humans. Well, one is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. Probably not a good idea to build the Jade Chamber to rebuild it when something bad's gonna happen. Could you imagine if she rebuilt it and then, like, it got destroyed again? If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. I think she'll do great. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. One has occupied enough of your time. You do talk a lot. <laughs> night is approaching. Oh, shit. It sounded like he just said, oh, hey, so S-word. I was worried that something may have happened to you. So I went outside to check and caught sight of my master. On top of this, you have been acting very strangely around me this morning, causing me to suspect that my master must have told you everything about me. After all, master is... very talkative. <laughs> Sorry, Shenhua. Paimon had you down as an adeptus this whole time, but it turns out Paimon was wrong. It's okay. I don't mind. The fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner. Because in my experience, trying to explain is a futile pursuit. I mean, you could have just said, like, I am not an adeptus. Like, that's pretty... It, it, you know? <laughs> First and foremost, 
We're just plain old friends. Cute. Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do. I must say I like the title friend very much indeed. It's like a common theme I feel like in this game where characters are like special in some way and so they're not they're like kind of isolated. Um and so they don't have any friends. But we're always making friends with these people and it's kind of wholesome. Look, look, the J Chamber is floating into the sky. Um but it seems to be tied down by something. Uh maybe that's to keep it from like Floating off into the sunset forever. That's because it's not finished. Oh. <laughs> hey, Byron! And hey, Beto! And hey! Um, person Paimon doesn't know? Oh, she's so cute. Given the enormous scale of the Jade Chamber, we split the construction work into two phases to make sure the structure remains balanced. Before we find some suitable plostrite, we build the Jade Chamber's keel at ground level. Oh. Once the plostrite is ready, we place it into the keel and let the partially constructed Jade Chamber rise up to the height of the oh. surrounding mountain peaks. <gasps> it's gonna be such a pretty scene whenever they release it. Oh my god. Oh, I've got some introductions to do. This is the renowned Miss Yun, or Yun Jin, probably the most famous figure in the Liyue opera scene. She's so precious. She looks like a five star. Greetings. Oh my god. These two are Paimon and the Traveler, both good buddies of mine. And this is, um, sorry, I'm uh, not sure we've met. <laughs> Shen Hu. I am their mm, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Good to meet you. A friend of a friend is my friend too. Or, as I like to say, a mate of a crewmate is part of the crew. That was really cringe. Excuse me for prying, Miss Shenhe, but are you competing as well? No, I don't have any questions for Ning Wong. I just wanted to help her win. In that case, I have a proposal to make. Lady Ningguang said that the first three contestants to procure all three materials will be awarded the chance to ask a question. Well, there are three teams here. Mm. We can split the prize between us. True. Can we all ask a question, though? All of us? Or can we only ask one singular question? <laughs> it would be really cool if uh, Yunjin would you know you know how she's an opera singer if she sang the music that plays as you're logging in because i feel like that's opera right it's like ah, ah. like she could do that maybe she's the one who sings it instead of competing against each other we could work together to secure the top three places between us what do you think sounds great how does it change things exactly? <laughs> I think I see where you're going with this, Miss Yoon. The plastrite was the most difficult item to source by a long shot. Luckily, all three of us managed to get our hands on it. The two remaining items aren't quite so rare, so as long as one of us finds a way to source it, the other two can hop on the bandwagon. How'd I do? Is that what you had in mind? Precisely. By the way, what question are you gonna ask Ningguang Yunjin? I'm looking for a venue to host the performance of our new opera. Ooh. Lady Ningguang has excellent judgment, so I would like to hear her opinion. What if she was really bad? Like, what if she was, like, tone deaf? My name is Yunjin. Perhaps you don't know me, but I believe that you forged some weaponry for my father in the past for stage use. Yunjin? Stage use? Oh, so <clears throat> you must be Miss Yoon. <laughs> Sorry, mm -hmm. my brain's finally caught up. <sighs> yeah, so stop being rude. <laughs> 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 hmm? Ah, hello. Are you here for something off the shelf, or do you need something forged? Excuse me, Master Zhang. We were wondering if you'd heard of something called a Wonder Core. Of course I have. Sorry, um, who's asking? My name is Yunjin. Perhaps you don't know me. But I believe that you forged some weaponry for my father in the past for stage use. Yunjin? Stage use? Oh, so <clears throat> you must be Miss Yoon. <clears throat> Sorry. Mm -hmm. My brain's finally caught up. <sighs> yeah, so uh, stop being rude. Be bashing a hammer all day. <laughs> Wait. Did, I, did anybody notice? Chi Chi is standing over there. 
it's you. <laughs> Chi Chi, what are you doing here? Seaside. Dangerous. Chi Chi is helping with the evacuation. Mm. Yes. Ning Guang said there's something bad in the sea. Not again. So she sent Chi Chi to evacuate everyone. <laughs> I came to Mount Tianung once with my father as a child. I remember it being such a long climb that I could barely feel my legs by the time we reached the top. <laughs> this is quite a trip down memory lane for me. Look at these majestic towering peaks and the gently flowing streams. It's like setting foot in paradise. That is pretty. No wonder the legend of the Divine Damsel of Devastation is said to have taken place here. Adepti wander oft where mortals seldom stride. Indeed, this looks like a place that one might expect to be frequented by Adepti. The Divine Damsel of Devastation is your upcoming opera, right? And the story takes place in Mount Tianhang. Huh. Seems like you have a real connection with this place. What's the story about, though? It's the story of a girl becoming a hero. Ooh. Cool. A hero story? They're Paimon's favorite. I hope we get to see the opera. Otherwise, this is a tease. The legend first arose in this area. It is said that there used to be a prosperous village on the mountain. In that village, there was a loving couple who were completely devoted to one another. One day, a terrifying monster appeared. The wife was out collecting herbs and was captured by the monster. Her husband was so distraught at the news that it broke his spirit and drove him to madness. The vile and vicious monster told the villagers, If you want to live, you must sacrifice a child to me. What a nasty piece of work! <laughs> Ugh. Paimon sure hopes this monster gets put in its place! But the monster was so terrible and so strong that all within the village were terrified of it. They had no choice but to give in to the monster's demand. Just while they were discussing whose child would be given over to the monster, a little girl suddenly stood up and came forward. No! Don't do it, little girl! <laughs> Unbeknownst to anybody else, she was concealing an exorcist's blade. She approached the monster's lair, feigning fear and trepidation. When she finally arrived, she courageously drew her sword and entered into a fierce struggle with the monster, from which she eventually emerged as the victor. That honestly sounds like Shenha's story a little bit. Like it, right? A little? Her extraordinary abilities drew the attention of the Adepti, and they took her as one of their own. Hmm? Her story became the stuff of legends. It's just like her. But alas, the paths of mortals and adepti seldom cross, and she would never again re-enter the mortal world. She's like, I kind of relate. Except she wasn't attacking a god. She was attacking... I mean, she wasn't attacking a monster. She was attacking a god. Um... <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't disappear. I really like this story, <laughs> but I personally think that perhaps the little girl was not as brave as the opera makes her out to be. I'm not sure she deserves all the praise she is given. Hmm, I've never considered that before. Opera is always an interpretation of the events it purports to portray. A certain degree of deviation from the truth is always inevitable. When my father wrote the script for this play, I suppose his intention was to inspire his audience with the character of the Divine Damsel. Hmm. I think it's a great story. The ideal story. Excuse us, sir. Can we ask you something? Ah. Uh. Huh. He didn't seem to catch that. Hello, sir. We were just passing by and wanted to ask if you happen to know anything about Sabrosium. Ah. <sighs> Is he trying to tell us to look for clues Point? in the village? I'd like to have a word with this gentleman. If that's okay with you, Uncle Ming Jin. What? It's... It's... Shen He. Shen He. You're alive. The rumors were true. Ah. So, all these years? Records of a changing village. The remains of a god 
an abandoned village, Mount Tianhong. A, a branch family of exorcists used to live in the east of the village. But in around two weeks, the mother died of disease. The young daughter went missing, and shortly after, the father... What? The father unalived himself on a tree in the yard of his own house. It has been confirmed that traces of an evil god's remains were found in the village. The villagers are panicking as no one is certain whether the evil god's remains are gone for good. Do be careful when you're in this area. I feel like this has to do with Shen, huh? That's... Does this mean that the true story of the Divine Damsel of Devastation happened right here, in this village? The time frame certainly matches, so it seems we're in the right area. Let's keep looking around. Oh my gosh. I did not know that her backstory was that dark. Huh. What's this? The doctor said you were gravely ill. Don't worry, I will give everything I have to save you. My heart bleeds whenever I see you getting wearier, your illness beyond treatment. How I wish I could suffer the pain for you. You said you had no regrets in this life and that you only wish for me to take good care of Shenha. Oof, but you regret nothing. Why the tears? I don't know what, uh? I don't know what I've been doing lately, though I still breathe. I feel like an empty shell. I've read all the ancient texts I could get my hands on, looking for ways to save you, but it is utterly futile. I finally found it. It was Mingjun. He had kept the book that could save you hidden. I took it and followed its instructions to summon a god and offer a sacrifice. Oh. The god appeared. I told him that I was willing to exchange my life for yours. He kept silent and only pointed at our daughter, Shenha. The god said her fate was to bear the curse of calamity and that she was prone to bring harm to those close to her. The god also said that she might even have been the cause of your death. In that case, I thought I should. I left her in the cave that the god mentioned. Three days have passed and still no news. I grow restless from waiting, seized by an ominous feeling. I'm sorry, my love, forgive me. You too, Shenha, please forgive me. How stupid I was, how blind. Let me apologize to both of you. In person. <gasps> uh, oh my god. He sacrificed his own child. Maybe this is the true story of the Divine Damsel of Devastation. So, Shenha is the Divine Damsel? Now that I think about it, she does behave rather like an adeptus, and she is about the right age. So that's why I've been getting the strangest feeling whenever I chat with her. I should have noticed it earlier. This, this is, uh, this is rough. What is going on? She was sacrificed to the monster by her own father. Yep. <sighs> The truth is even more lamentable than the opera. Now I understand why Shenha said the girl was not as brave as people think. Oh. It wasn't her choice to enter that ghastly situation. She was forced into it. Oh. It looks like my father may need to make a few revisions to his beloved opera. Hey, we forget that um. Don't know if you want that kind of content in your opera. It's horrible what Shenho went through, but at least she got to be raised by a cool adeptus. That's kind of cool, I guess. It's horrible, though. I feel like this game just keeps getting darker and darker. <laughs> I was a very close friend of your father's. I could have stopped him from performing the summoning ritual. I had plenty of chances, but mm. I couldn't bring myself to stand up to him. I just let things happen, let it all escalate. And, well, we all know how that story ended. You're lucky Shenha is still alive, or I would kick your butt, sir. There is nothing he wouldn't have done for his true love. Nothing. 
That's horrible. Do you still hate him? I don't know what I feel. I'm told my fate is to bear the curse of calamity, so my master bound my soul with red ropes to curb my aggression. But it also dampened my emotions, making me dispassionate, like the Adepti. So if you ask me how I feel about the past, if I hate my father or not, the truth is, I feel nothing at all. It must have been so tough for you all these years. Shenha, we're back! Oh, then I will leave you all in peace. Shenha, it brings me some solace knowing that you are okay. I'll tell you more about the old times next time we meet. Thanks, mister. We found some info in the end. Shenha, look. This tells us how to find Sabrosium. All we gotta do is go to the middle of that lake. Hm. Let's go then. Uh, oh, Miss Shenha, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Just now, in the village, we found your father's diary. It turns out that many of the details in the Divine Damsel of Devastation are not true to the facts. So I'd like to change them. Why? I know I say that opera always deviates from the truth, but now that the main character is standing right here in front of me, I cannot simply dismiss your lived experience in favor of my father's fiction. It's okay. I like your version. <laughs> but, uh... My master once said that the day I learn how to use my strength for the good of others is the day that I can truly become part of human society. I think it's better off as the way that it is. I mean, as long as Shenha is okay with it, I feel like it's just better off because the other story is really dark. And I think, like, even though that's not how it happened, I think now that Shenha has grown into this really strong woman, um, it's like a metaphor for how strong she is now. And how if she were to be put in that situation again, she probably would have done what the tale says, if that makes sense. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But yeah. Shenha! Yinjin! Cut the chit chat! Let's go! Oh my god! We can't let someone else beat us to it! True, but like, they're having a moment. Maybe it won't work for me to stay here after all. I think she's doing a good job. Either way, I'm very glad to have met you. And I'll take care of those adept eye sigils. Ningguang's little secretary! We found all the materials! <laughs> oh! Already? All three of you found them together. Okay, I see. The Wonderclores and Adepti sigils look good. It seems that we found our winners. Oh, yeah. Bywin calls for the participants to gather. I hereby announce that the winners of this material procurement contest are the Traveler, Yunjin, and Beido. What? It's over already? I haven't even found the plus strike yet. <laughs> of course you haven't. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, so close, but so far. Combine the Adepti sigils with the Wonder Cores and insert them into the Jade Chamber's control compartment. The construction of the new Jade Chamber is now officially complete. Once the tethers are released, it will soar into the sky. I'm excited. Thank you all for your work. Now it is time for me to fulfill my promise. Yeah! Miss Yun, I've already heard something about the reason for your involvement. You are looking for a venue for your new opera, aren't you? That's right. Lady Ningguang, I would like to hear your opinion. The unveiling of Miss Yun's grand new opera surely requires a venue of equal grandeur. So what would you say if I proposed that we stage your first performance right here in the newly built Jade Chamber? Yes. The Jade Chamber offers a splendid panoramic view of the mountains and the bustling city. <laughs> she always it sounds so apathetic and I love it. performance to be hosted <laughs> in the heavens. I can think of no better stage for you than here, Miss Yun. Thank you, Lady Ningguang. Then I will prepare my props and other articles shortly. Please allow me to bring all these aboard the Jade Chamber. You're quite welcome. It's truly what a good opera deserves. 
Oh, the Traveler, Shenha, Paimon, I'll be leaving now. Do come and see my play when the time comes. I'm so excited. You're next. What is your question? Do you know where my I brother is? Clarify. I do not know your brother's whereabouts. Please, don't waste your question on this matter. Wow. You're a mind reader, Ninglung. Oh well. Guess Paimon will ask a question then. Managing a successful business is not as simple as you might think. <laughs> So I promise you that should you one day require financial assistance, you may seek employment here. I will pay you at the highest rate of remuneration. Oh, great! So next time we run out of Mora, we just need but, to come to Ningua? Then she's not actually paying Any us. From us. Shenha, she's only gonna pay us if we work. Me? Yes, this is a group effort! Thank you, but I don't have anything to ask. She's too modest. Are you sure? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'd urge you not to squander it. Yeah, just don't waste it. Uh, hold on a second. Paimon can probably think of another one. Lady Ningguang, do you think I can ever fit in in Liyue Harbor? Oh. Now that is an interesting question. Liyue she goes, Harbor no. Is very inclusive. <laughs> As long as you respect the rules here, you will not be turned away. So, the key is whether or not you yourself can develop a sense of belonging in Liyue Harbor. Huh. A sense of belonging? Yes. To become fond of a place, to feel part of it, it always requires a reason. Ningguang, don't forget what we talked about. It's not going to be easy to deal with. I don't think my fleet can take it on their own. Don't worry. I have made preparations. The wound dressings are ready, and the Millilith have set up an ambush. Glad to hear it. <sighs> Watch your back. Stay alert. Beetle? Ningguang? What are you talking about? You'll see when the Jade Chamber ascends. However, it's not the most pleasant topic of conversation. Maybe it's better that you don't know. This is concerning. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> when I first set foot in the Jade Chamber, I stood at the edge of the platform and looked down upon Liyue Harbor far below. At that time, I dreamed that one day the Jade Chamber's shadow would be seen at all seven nations of Tevat. My wish has not changed to this very day. However, it is not only out of consideration for myself that I have built the Jade Chamber anew at this time. I hope the Jade Chamber will always float in the skies above Liyue Harbor, bearing witness to the prosperity and peace of the human world. And I hope that you can all witness it with me. Let the Ascension Ceremony commence! Ooh, I've been excited for this! Oh, it's one of those pretty cutscenes. Oh, it's so pretty! <laughs> oh my... Are you kidding me? Girl, this time- this time we can't mess this up. Like, we- we can't. This This is like deja vu. Right on cue, the Avenger of the Vortex, Beisht. Who is that? Osile's wife, final follower of the Overlord of the Vortex. Sounds like you knew this was coming! Beto sensed something was stirring in the deep. She warned me months ago. Knowing she harbors hatred toward the Jade Chamber, I chose to rebuild it now as a way of drawing her out. No. Huh? In this human age, the people of Liyue must find a way to overcome this crisis on our strength alone. Oh my god, this is epic.
Oh no! Oh god! on you. Your bow and arrow is not going to cut it, honey. brings nothing but disaster to us all. At least if you die, I can bring her back. The day you learn how to use your strength for the good of others is the day that you can truly become part of human society. What are you doing here? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. We can't let you be the only one taking this risk. <laughs> Manifest. Oh, do your magic. Um, no escape from fate. Oh. Wait, did we still get it? Cool. Shouldn't we go after her? Are you all right? I'm just a little exhausted. Otherwise, fine. I wanted to deal with it myself. I didn't expect you to follow me. Don't worry. She's not coming back anytime soon. After an injury like that, she'll likely seek refuge somewhere else. How did things go underwater? It's been dealt with. She was injured before entering the water. It didn't take too much effort to finish the job. True. Good. So the crisis has been safely averted. When you visit the Jade Chamber in the future, you will be afforded generous treatment. Lady Ningguang, the fleet reports that the sea monster has left Guyan Stone Forest and the surrounding waters have returned to normal. Thank you. How are the Millilith? Thanks to the medical supplies you prepared and Lady Keqing's command, our losses were minimal. Of course, we owe huge thanks to this young lady for her help. On behalf of the entire Millilith, thank you for your service. I... <sighs> Just like the hero in the story. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Great. Then next time I watch Miss Yun's opera, I'll be able to take the compliments. <laughs> that makes me emotional, because that's what I was saying earlier. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be a hero, though. I just wanted to protect you. Let the soldiers recuperate, but don't let your guard down. If she returns with a vengeance, we must be prepared. Yes, ma'am. You've been monitoring us for some time now. I trust you've reached a conclusion. I mean, I think it went well. Hmm. You wish to hear one's opinion. Well, things would have hardly gone so smoothly <laughs> had it not been for Shen he. That is 100% true. That I do not deny. However, final victory was always going to be ours, even had things been a little more arduous. <laughs> if it came to it, I could always destroy another Jade Chamber. One has observed <laughs> your adaptation of the Guizhong Ballista. 
and find oneself compelled to admit that you have evidence some degree of novel thinking. I already know that the Jade Chamber is going to look exactly the same as the first one because I know Mihoyo probably did not want to redesign it. Traveler, please take Aww. good care of Shenhe. She is a dear child. I love her. That was so, like... <sighs> What do you think about that cutscene? You didn't even have time to process it. It made me cry. Like it was so good. I, I really, I really love this quest because it's really, it's really impactful. Like you really feel for Shenha and everything she went through and how she's so strong. Oh, that cutscene was really good. One has many fond memories of Shanha's childhood that she may be interested to hear about. Hey, just like when she embarrassed Ganyu. Now it's time to embarrass Shenha. <laughs> There'll be no need for that. <laughs> oh. Hm. <laughs> they are all like this. Fine. Since you care not to listen, one shan't be telling you. One shall be going homeward now. <laughs> Please. Have a good rest. <laughs> Come to the Jade Chamber when you have recovered your energy. <laughs> we must celebrate both the completion of the Jade Chamber and the fact that Liyue has weathered another crisis. This banquet must be the most spectacular. <laughs> that was <ever>. really funny. <laughs> have you heard? Miss Yun's going to be performing. <gasps> oh my god. Just when you think the quest is like over and nothing else is really gonna happen sure have honestly it's the main reason i'm here i've never missed any of ms yun's performances and i don't intend to start now i hear she's going to perform the divine damsel of devastation today the one written by her father oh my... i've been so excited that i've barely slept the last few nights hey look ms yun is going on stage oh i'm so excited This is so beautiful. Why am I crying? Yeah, and then the crane got upset and left. Jinri Zai Hui, Xin Peng Jiu Yu Zuo Man Tang, Gong Ju Ci Shi. Wow, it's so beautiful. What do you think? Personally, I thought I sang rather well. It was beautiful. 
beautiful. Paimon wants to learn too. It was wonderful. Also, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to you, the Divine Damsel of Devastation is a more nuanced tale than ever. The play has an ending, but life goes on. I believe you will find a way to fit in in Liyue Harbor. Thank you. I think I've found the opportunity I needed to change. Ms. Yun! <laughs> but here you are! Great to see you! Huh? Hey, this young lady with the white hair looks like some kind of VIP. Yeah, that's it, like an adeptus. Wait, you're the girl from the opera. Aren't this you? guy. Let me pull up a chair. All right. We'll all have a friendly chat. Get better acquainted. <laughs> this is like, it's like my one of my uncles. You could leave at a wedding. Alone. That is, <laughs> if you'd prefer to finish your drink via the orifice of your own choice. Uh oh, this feels all too familiar. Shen has back to her old self again. It seems she still has a long way to go. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Calm down, Shenha. Calm down. Oh, it's over. That was so good. <laughs> oh my god, that was amazing. <laughs>